everyone and welcome to the lecture series. So I developed this series for those of you that have a background in science. So this is definitely a more advanced level than most of my videos. That's because I'm going to be using my iPad to really go through more of the formulas and a lot more complex theories that are out there. One of my, the main subjects I'll be focusing on is going to be theoretical physics because um, that's actually one of my favorite topics. Uh, again, I'm focusing mainly in um, astronomy and, and cosmology. Um, so I won't be touching on bio or chemistry or anything like that. Maybe a little bit in some of my videos, but again, mainly um, going through the complex theories of uh, cosmology, quantum mechanics, and it is going to involve quite a lot of math. So that's why it's not going to be so much me talking to camera, but be more so um, actually showing you guys and drawing out for you how to work your way through certain theories to understand it more. Um, again, this is for you, those of you guys that probably went to university for some type of um, subject matter in science. So it is meant for, um, for you guys. So I I hope you guys enjoy this and um, enjoy episode one, which is on the mathematics of string theory. If you guys haven't seen my original video on string theory, definitely check that one out first. It goes over more of the basics of what string theory actually is, whereas this video, I'm really gonna dive in deep with the mathematics and all the formulas that actually go into string theory. So to give you a little bit of background, so string theory, it actually ties together both um, the understanding of gravity, so the, 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 uh, the theory of gravity, with quantum mechanics. Now, when you look at them separately, they work, right? Okay, so we got the, the theory of gravity, which is Einstein's theory of general relativity, which pretty much says that if you have a body of mass, it's going to warp the fabric of space causing um, like a warping in space, just like how the sun is gravitationally bound with Earth and the moon with Earth, and it um, will start to cause a, a effect within the fabric of space. With quantum mechanics, it works on a very, very tiny level, and it pretty much talks about the behavior of very small quantum particles, um, which I'll get into in a second. Usually by themselves, they work out great, but together, the mathematics don't really go hand in hand. So what string theory does is it actually offers um, a way for those two to actually work hand in hand where it does make sense mathematically. Now the reason there's a lot of controversy about it is it because it involves multiple dimensions. You look at spatial dimensions, you have like left and right, up and down, you have width and depth, okay? You got buildings going up and down, you got width and you got length. So that's three dimensions of space. But with string theory, it talks about the potentiality of curled up dimensions that we can't actually fathom, that we cannot see. Now something that's boggled physicists and theoretical physicists is the fact that we understand how gravity impacts, you know, like it's the, any objects around it, for instance, we know that um, the sun, because of its mass, has a gravitational pull, which then affects space-time, warping space-time, allowing Earth to be gravitationally bound to it. But we still don't exactly know how that happens and why that happens. We can measure like the, the actual scale of what's going on, but there isn't really a complete understanding. So now this is where quantum physics comes in. There's a theoretical particle known as the graviton, which pretty much right now physicists believe is some that is a particle, quantum particle, that pretty much is telling the fabric of space to be warped by a certain degree or certain measurement due to the body of mass, so due to the sun. And this is now where, where the math comes in. So those of you guys that are sensitive to math, look away now. Uh, actually, no, don't look away, face your fear. Um, so I'm gonna go over some math now, and the first thing is gonna be um, the measurement of the gravitational force it just in the macro scale, so in the cosmos, and that's based off of Einstein's equation. Now we wanna first look at the gravitational force between two bodies. So we are using the equation F, which stands for force, equals G big M little m over R squared where G is the universal gravitational constant, which was first determined by Sir Isaac Newton, um, but was first experimentally determined in 1798 by Henry Cavendish. Um, so it's the value of G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th uh, meters cubed, kilograms to the minus one, and seconds to the minus two. And we're going to multiply that by two bodies of mass. So the big M is the first body of mass and the small m is the second body of mass. And that's divided by r squared, which is just the distance between the two bodies. And this equation determines the force that acts on each body gravitationally. 
Now the next thing we want to look at is the electrostatic force between objects. Because there's an electrostatic force that comes off objects and are exerted onto one another, uh, which in turn would cause either an attraction or, or a repulsion of the bodies of mass. So we're now turning to the equation F, which is the electrostatic force, is equal to uh, Ke times Q1 times Q2 over R squared. And a uh, little Ke is actually something known as Coulomb's constant. And the value of, of that is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newtons times meter squared over C squared. Where Q1 and Q2 are the charges, the electrical charges coming off of the two bodies. And R squared is, again, that distance between the two bodies. Now, with string theory, it's the understanding that the basic fundamentals of nature are string-like rather than point-like. And this makes a massive difference when it comes to the math of the universe. Uh, for example, rather than measuring a singular point in space, you would be measuring the wave function of multiple points that have been passed over by the string or multiple dimensions that we can't actually see and are considered to possibly be curled up. Now the idea of curled up dimensions was actually first brought up by uh, Oscar Klein in 1926 who was talking about how there may be additional dimensions beyond the three spatial dimensions that we don't actually see and it could be that they're, they're curled up uh, where we aren't able to actually calculate them right now. So that's now where this math comes in. So something to notice as far as um, what the math is that we use, is we're using the inverse square law. Now the way that the inverse square law ties in uh, mathematically, it's very important because we use one over r squared for the three spatial dimensions, um, as I mentioned earlier. But when it comes to having more dimensions, uh, what exactly do we do? Well, this is when the inverse square law turns into one over r to the d minus one power, where d is considered to be the number of dimensions. And in string theory, we have nine dimensions of space. So one over r to the min nine minus one is one over r to the eighth power. Something else to keep in mind is that the force is directly proportional to the number of dimensions. The magnitude of the force is directly proportional to the number of dimensions. Now, how exactly do we get to the nine dimensions of space in string theory? Well, you have one dimension of time, you got the nine dimension of space, so you actually have a total of ten dimensions when it comes to super string theory, versus bosonic string theory, which is the standard string theory, and then versus M theory. So we got a lot of things going on here. Um, there's quite a lot when it comes to multiple dimensions existing in space. Now we got to look at something known as the standard model of quantum physics. It looks at elementary particles. When I say elementary particles, I'm referring to things like quarks, electrons, and protons. Um, so string theory says that quartz, electrons, and protons are what makes up all of the elements that exist in our universe as we know it and in life as we know it. And string theory also says that each of these elementary particles are actually made up of uh, vibrating strings, a, a type of filament looking um, thing, and it vibrates at different frequencies. And as it vibrates at different frequencies, it then produces different types of elements as we see them in the universe. So let's actually take a quick look at the standard model of elementary particles. I'm going to draw this out for you so you guys can kind of see this. So we have the atom, right? It, we always thought that was the smallest, smallest possible thing that we could um, even fathom existing. And the atom is made of a nucleus and then electrons, uh, which are orbiting around the nucleus. And then inside of that atom in its nucleus, you have something known as neutrinos and protons that make it up. And then inside of that proton, you got something known as quarks. So let's break down what I mean by quarks. So you have fermions, uh, which is what all the matter in the universe is. And this is made up of quarks and antiquarks. This is what makes up the protons and makes up the nucleus and makes up the atom that makes up the elements in our universe that we see. And then we got our bosons, and our bosons are the force carriers. So these are what produce quite a lot of forces in space and time and the fabric of space as we know it. And um, the quarks. So the quarks are what makes up protons. So that's what you guys see right here. So that's very important for trying to understand very, very small particles. So the whole point of trying to understand string theory and understand how multiple dimensions might work is 
by really digging in deep with understanding how these smaller, tiny, tiny particles work, quantum particles. Because as I mentioned before, like how we said on string theory that you have um, all these different filaments and all these different strings that would vibrate at a different frequency, hence creating um, different elements in our universe, that can be kind of related to how guitar strings work. So um, here you have a guitar and each string as you pluck it vibrates at a different frequency, like one to create A or F sharp or G. So similarly, each elementary particle vibrates at a different frequency, hence creating a different um, element that we find in our universe. So you have like a tiny loop string that vibrates each at a different frequency. It oscillates one way and you get an electron. Um, and then you have another string that oscillates some other way and all of a sudden you get a photon or a quark. And it really can go on and on of how many vibrating strings there really are that make up the, the quantum world. But you know what? We're, we're scientists, theoretical physicists are working on trying to find that answer right now. And I think it's something that they're eventually going to be able to um, figure out. But now the thing is, okay, why can't we actually see these other dimensions um, that are created through these vibrating strings? One idea is that they're actually folded up dimensions. So what I mean by that is they're so small that they're, like I mentioned earlier, they're curled up to the point where you can, we cannot even see them or we can't even fathom them. But this is what theoretical physicists are working on right now. Mathematically, using the inverse square law that I mentioned earlier and all those other equations, scientists may be able to actually detect it. They're doing this through so many different ways. Um, one of them is through like the Large Hadron Collider where they are colliding these elementary particles together, smashing them together, um, trying to measure some type of um, vibration that comes after that. There's detectors that can um, detect what happens after that. So this is how gravitational waves were, were also detected. Um, but another thing too is that there, a lot of times when you have these small particles smashed together, they actually create another particle. And this is where we're able to see quantum particles, maybe see quarks and be able to, to measure not only what the result is, but how it happened. And through that figuring out of how it happened is how we could potentially find or detect or see another dimension. But either way, right now in our universe, what we're able to actually fathom are three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. So I'm really hoping and I'm really excited for more of the research that's going to come out of this. Um, so I hope that at least uh, some of this was able to translate over to some of you guys who maybe was wondering and questioning how all this even happened and how scientists are actually working on this now. And again, there are so many more equations out there. I did not touch on M theory at all. Um, M theory is a whole nother world. Um, but if you guys like this video, maybe I can do another one. So thank you so much again for watching. And um, you guys are awesome. I hope that you like this and that you got something out of it. Um, so if you liked it, give me a like or a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.